السلام علیکم خواتین و حضرات وسیم ایس اینڈ ویلکم سی یو ٹو لیکچر نمبر سکس آف مارکیٹنگ فار نان پرافٹ آرگنائزیشنز ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو ایٹ ایٹ دا ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان ٹوڈیز لرننگ از گوئنگ ٹو بی آل اباؤٹ سوشل مارکیٹنگ اینڈ دا لیکچر از کون بی ڈیوائڈیڈ انٹو فور کمپوننٹس دا ویری فرسٹ کمپوننٹ از اباؤٹ سوشل مارکیٹنگ آئی اے واٹ ایٹ ریئلی از ہاؤ ایٹ ڈفرز فرام ادر ایریاز ود ان دی این پی او سیکٹر The reason we really have to talk about social marketing in its uh, separateness is that the terminology suggests that any program undertaken within the NPO sector is social marketing. The connotation owes the fact that uh, all programs within the NPO sector are geared towards social welfare, improvement of society, and therefore any program which is about social welfare is social marketing. But that's not the case. There's a fine line or a distinction between social marketing and generic marketing. Generic marketing, we talk about in the context of commercial marketing, and we also talk about in the context of NPO marketing. As a matter of fact, generic marketing is all about application of the principles of marketing mix, meaning those four variables we keep talking about and we keep referring to in terms of different examples and different contexts uh, within the NPO sector, the commercial sector, and so on and so forth. There has been uh, quite a lot of debate about uh, what social marketing is and what it ought to be. And uh, it just so happens that uh, over the last 10, 15 years, meaning in this very 21st century, there has been a clarity on part of all the experts as to what social marketing is. Well, it is all about changing the behavior of the target audience. Now, this is something that we already have learned. How does it differ? It differs in the sense that uh, while carrying out social marketing, social marketers draw their attention and apply all their expertise toward getting the behavior changed. This is not the case when you follow other programs uh, relating social welfare. Uh, you may be selling a product, you may be offering a service, but here, You're doing something which is all about the customer. In other words, whatever you do benefits the customer. Nothing goes to the benefit of the marketer. Everything goes to the benefit of the customer, and the customer benefits only if he or she changes his behavior or her behavior. This is the basic difference. As a matter of fact, the results achieved from social marketing over the last couple of decades have been very impressive all over the world. Social marketing has been used in terms of uh, the prevention of forest fires, in terms of uh, achieving success on the family planning side, in terms of uh, having teenagers quit smoking, in terms of uh, convincing people to administer the oral rehydration therapy in case of diarrhea and therefore controlling um, child mortality. There have been so many different areas where social marketing has played its role. The only a uh, key is that social marketing uh, brings about a complex and a sophisticated value exchange whereby it is the customer who stands to gain and not the, the marketer. Let me give you a couple of examples, or rather two examples which are very parallel to each other. The one falls within the domain of uh, generic marketing and the other um, within uh, social marketing. However, with both uh, pertain to the NPO sector. The, the first is about a dispensary which you as a group of uh, the social marketers are running. The dispensary is all about offering uh, medical treatment to accident and crime victims, offering uh, medical first aid to the walk-in uh, patients, and so on and so forth. And you may have more than one dispensary because you have a comprehensive distribution system whereby you are offering Get your service um, at more places than one. Here, get you can um, see and you are convinced that uh, get you have to apply all the four variables of marketing mix and all the P's are there. You have uh, the dispensary as the point of distribution, like I said, and uh, get you are offering uh, the medical treatment as the product. There's a price that you charge for that. It may be a minimal price, subsidized, or maybe it's free of charge. And uh, the benefit is uh, what the target gets, 
and uh, the promotion is uh, the actual existence of the dispensary of which the greatest manifestation can be by way of the ambulance with which uh, applies on uh, different roads of the city. So this is an example which falls within the domain of generic marketing. You're offering a service, a very noble service, uh, with the help of uh, the four P's of marketing, but this is not social marketing because you're not doing anything to change the behavior of your customers, to change the behavior of the target audience. The target audience, whenever it needs the service of the dispensary, walks to the, to the dispensary or uh, have the dispensary uh, send the ambulance to them so that they can be um, looked after, attended to, and their need addressed. Let us not talk about the other example from the social marketing domain. You are a team of uh, the marketing people running a program on inoculation. And uh, you have to educate and convince uh, village folks from one of the communities about the efficacy of uh, the inoculation because you want to prevent those people uh, from um, the outbreak of a possible lethal disease. And therefore, you go to the community and you educate them before the medical team can arrive there uh, about the utility of the program and uh, convince them that uh, they should get themselves and all the family members inoculated because it is going to be to their benefit. So in other words, if you are in a position to convince them about the benefit, in other words, the action reward system, if they take a particular action by way of presenting themselves for inoculation, they're going to get a particular benefit, you have done your job and you have achieved the mission. And this is what social marketing does. In other words, social marketing brings about a behavior change. To talk about the four Ps in this example as well, uh, let me say that uh, the total administration of the program is the product inoculation being the final end. The visit of the marketing team is uh, the promotion and uh, the visit of the medical team that is inoculating the target market is uh, the point of distribution and the price paid is the value exchange. Rather, price paid is part of the value exchange and that is, in actuality, the behavior change. They have changed their values. They have changed their attitudes in terms in fact, before changing the value system, uh, after getting convinced that a behavior change is going to be to their benefit, and uh, therefore they have presented themselves for inoculation. And this is what social marketing does. Let me uh, show you uh, a graphical presentation which uh, brings about uh, complete clarity on part of all of us as to uh, what uh, social marketing is and how it differs from the rest of uh, the marketing as part of the NPO sector. This uh, graphical presentation, as you can see, shows us the classification of social programs. As you can see here, social programs can be classified into two of the major areas. The one is generic marketing programs, which is right here. The other one is social marketing programs, which is right there. I've talked about these two in clarity by giving you two examples, the one from the generic marketing programs, the dispensary example, and one from the social marketing programs, the inoculation program. It is obvious that uh, on the generic side, we try to achieve the mission through generic programs, whereas on the social marketing side, we seek a behavior change. And uh, both aspects basically converge at one single point right here, which is social welfare improvement. Like I said at the beginning of the uh, component, that uh, the whole NPO sector is all about seeking welfare of the society and bringing about improvements after improvements, but there are certain fine distinctions between generic marketing programs and social marketing programs. I think in order to bring about even more clarity, we should uh, say that the generic marketing programs are the welfare programs, or rather the generic welfare programs, whereas programs falling on the other side are the social marketing programs. One thing which uh, this graphical presentation and uh, the learning of the component has made very clear is that social marketing is a bit complex. Complex in the sense because it is not the marketer who has to take an action. As a matter of fact, after 
his taking the action. It is the customer who has to take uh, the desired action at a stage which is not within the control of uh, the marketing uh, the people. This also happens on the commercial side, but um, there are certain complexities involved because the marketer can never be very sure that the benefit he has talked about as part of the education of the program of the target audience is really going to work or not. Well, this again okay, holds very much true on, on the commercial side, but again, there are certain subtleties and complexities okay, which make the whole thing rather more challenging and okay, brings in an element of doubt okay, whether this really is going to work or not. And I'm gonna talk about those differences in a moment. Another thing you know, which is very clear is that uh, there is no price charged as part of the social uh, programs. The beneficiaries are the target market and not the marketers. And um, another uh, the fact of social marketing is that uh, the target market is thoroughly educated of the utility of the program because it is complex and it is long drawn. The implementation is going to take uh, a lot more time than other generic programs. And therefore, to keep people engaged and to keep them uh, interested uh, toward getting the desired benefit it takes a lot more effort on the side of the social marketing programs in comparison with other generic programs. May those fall within the sector of uh, commercial marketing or uh, NPO marketing. Now, after having learned what social marketing is, Again, one thing has become very clear that social marketing is different from the rest of the marketing, which is generic marketing. What are those differences uh, which make uh, the social marketing more challenging and uh, make the job of uh, social marketers a lot more harder? Uh, what is it that makes the process so long drawn? And what is it that uh, makes uh, the social marketing program kind of a self-generated programs in which uh, the target audience has a lot greater role to play. Let me talk about those factors the one by one. Well, in the first place, social marketing remains under a lot of intense scrutiny by the public because of the fact that they are working for improvement of the society on a program which is meant for social welfare. They are under a lot more scrutiny by the stakeholders than commercial products are. If somebody is not really interested in buying a commercial product, well, they don't buy it. Uh, but uh, here, conversely, uh, the social change is highly desirable and uh, the people want the social marketers to work in a way that uh, that change is brought about. So there are always stakeholders who keep you under the microscope and um, try to assess you on a performance appraisal scale. But the fact remains, there is no performance appraisal scale because the process is long drawn. It is not really visible and uh, it takes a lot more time, a lot longer time to implement it. And therefore, the results which happen to be intangible are not seen. Uh, the only thing you can offer is the promise and therefore um, the stakeholders can okay, become impatient and uh, they get impatient to the point that they start interfering with the programs and the structure of the organization. So in order to cope with this kind of a situation and circumstances, what social marketers generally do, they bring into the marketing mix of social marketing two more factors, and those are politics and public relationing. Public relationing is not confined to just maintaining your relationships with donors and uh, funders and uh, other uh, stakeholders. Um, it is uh, an effort on your part to uh, keep your stakeholders engaged in a way that they do not interfere, that they keep involved and they are convinced, they should stay convinced that your efforts will be fruitful one day. Another factor that uh, really differentiates social marketing from the rest of the marketing is uh, with the very high expectations on part of the stakeholders for complete eradication of the social problem. The problem will get resolved universally only if there is a universal adoption of the changed behavior, meaning the change which is desirable and for which the organization is working. 
It is not really possible because you just cannot have 100% people or the target audience to uh, rally around your point and change their behaviors, which are so deep-seated and have evolved over the last, not just decades, but rather centuries. So the job of the social marketers is here to lower the expectations of the stakeholders. It is generally said that uh, social marketers succeed in getting the behaviors changed to the extent of like, you know, 15 to 20 percent. So in other words, 20 uh, percent is a very good score um, on a scale of zero to 100. Uh, therefore, expecting that um, a social problem is going to be totally eradicated by 100 uh, percent does not amount to having very realistic expectations. Yet another uh, a point which um, gives a uh, very distinct uh, differentiation to uh, social marketing programs is uh, the fact that social marketers have to deal with uh, negative demand all the time. Negative demand is all those factors which uh, are uh, undertaken by the target audience and social marketers are out to change all those. In other words, all those habits and attitudes and behaviors which uh, the target audience is following and the social marketers um, are wanting to do something exactly opposite to that and opposite of that. Now, this is something which the target market uh, doesn't really like. They detest it, as a matter of fact. Um, just to give you examples, if you ask them to conserve water, they may not like it. If you want to have your target audience to lower their thermostats, during the summer uh, period uh, when it comes to using air conditioning or um, tell your uh, target audience to start behaving in the roads in order to have sanity in um, uh, the flow of traffic, uh, these are not the kind of things with which they will immediately buy okay, because these are very ingrained habits and uh, this is what you call negative demand. Um, some, uh, certain behaviors on part of the target audience with which they want to maintain and continue with and you as social marketers want to change. So that is a huge challenge. Yet another factor which makes social marketing rather more challenging is that social marketers have to deal with mostly non-literate population. I'm not saying here illiterate. It could be a combination of illiterate and semi-literate kind of people. So the population on the whole is kind of non-literate. That is the reason that uh, social marketing is generally practiced in the third world. It is uh, not a phenomenon which is uh, followed in the, uh, the Western world. Uh, by and large, it is uh, uh, seen uh, being practiced in the third world. And uh, the organizations that uh, started undertaking social marketing programs and are still supportive in a huge way of social marketing effort are uh, the World Bank and uh, the U.S. Agency for International Development, meaning USAID. Because of the fact that uh, it takes uh, a lot more time and a lot more effort and uh, the financial support, these organizations have uh, the jumped into the arena uh, trying to uh, help the third world countries improve their social welfare. Back to the point of uh, non-literate population, uh, the greatest challenge which uh, social marketers face while dealing with uh, this kind of target market is the communication effort and the communication programs. It is not a question of coming up with uh, the high uh, flying uh, kind of uh, the brochures and uh, flyers or high sounding kind of uh, the marketing campaigns on uh, radio and television. It is a question of talking with an audience that behaves in a very peculiar way because they have a very different kind of patterns of social interaction to show. And therefore, social marketers have to be very creative when it comes to putting together their communication campaigns. And they do that with the help of the people from other social disciplines about which I will talk shortly. The idea here is to have campaigns which have an appeal for the target audience. And since they are not literate, you have to come up with uh, things like you know, cartoons or characters or uh, some other uh, local uh, tricks you know, which uh, you um, put together with the help of mediators, moderators, and uh, the local observers. Another factor uh, which uh, keeps social marketing programs under a lot of uh, uh, stress 
and uh, poses uh, a huge challenge is uh, that social marketers are in a difficult position to prove that uh, the programs they're talking about and the education they're imparting uh, are really going to be very helpful and beneficial for the target audience. Because while they educate their target audience, there is nothing they can show them. There is nothing tangible they can talk about. They can only talk about promises, but otherwise nothing happens. And that makes the whole exercise very challenging. If you talk about the benefits, I mean, a mother which is going to administer an ORT to her children in case of diarrhea is not really convinced that uh, when the time comes, this is going to work. And even if she gets convinced that, uh, that this is uh, a good program, could be beneficial, and she follows it in true letter and spirit, she might still think that the same situation would have prevailed if she had not taken this action. I mean, the babies would still have been okay even if she had not administered this ORS. So this is uh, a great uh, difficulty which uh, the marketing people face while dealing with uh, their target audience. This, in other words, is the invisibility of the benefit which uh, the social marketer just cannot show his target audience. So it makes the job a lot more harder. Another thing which is a constraining factor is uh, the misconception and misperception on part of the target audience that uh, they do not get the benefit directly out of a changed behavior. Just go back to the example of lowering the thermostat of the air conditioners or conserving water and you will know what I'm talking about. Uh, these people may think that uh, by lowering the thermostat, somebody else is going to be the beneficiary. The benefit doesn't come to me. You know, that this is the way that these people think. By conserving water, somebody else is going to have okay, his portion of the water. It's not me. I am going to pay for that water in any case. So why conserve water? So this is the third party benefit, which becomes kind of a constraining factor okay, while uh, these social marketers educate uh, their target audience, not only during the education of uh, the program, but also afterwards. As a matter of fact, you see, it counts uh, more afterwards than during the education program because it is the timing you see, when the target audience is going to take the action. And if they do not take the action by not changing their behavior, it means they either do not fully understand the uh, dynamics of the um, action reward equation or they just want to stay oblivious to it. They just don't want to follow it because it is a selfish attitude they have on their part and not a selfless attitude. The fact of the matter is that social marketing is all about selflessness. It is not about selfishness. So this is a huge challenge which the social marketers face. Another constraining factor which draws distinction between the social marketing and the generic marketing is that uh, social marketers could always uh, have to uh, operate uh, with severe uh, the budget limitations. They know they have to go to the outside sources for funding because they want to keep their finance pool sustainable at all times. And therefore, they do not want to get into a spending program or a spending mode which may reflect of a wastefulness and uh, give any cause for concern to the stakeholders. And yet, they have to be very effective in terms of carrying out their programs because they want to achieve their mission. They want to completely implement the program. And you can well imagine the kind of predicament social marketers at times find themselves in. Another distinguishing factor of social marketing is that social marketers cannot modify their offering. Let me draw here a comparison of social marketing with commercial marketing. When um, a product is no longer preferred by the target audience, what is it that commercial marketers do? They always talk with uh, the production department of the company and bring about a change in the features of the product in line with the changing preferences of their consumers. But this is not the case when it comes to social marketing programs. Just think of uh, the ORS. I mean, the way it is given, maybe in sachets or maybe in... Um, you know, the bulk form for you to prepare that solution uh, in your homes. The fact remains that there are certain dispensations created by the medical scientists, and therefore that uh, puts certain limitations on the way an offering or a product looks like. Another factor which um, 
social marketing apart is um, skepticism on part of uh, the co-workers, colleagues, and uh, the many stakeholders uh, who are otherwise supposed to support the programs and support the social marketers. They start questioning the very validity of um, the marketing programs because they're convinced that uh, these programs can be carried out without any marketing support. This is a huge misunderstanding on part of uh, um, co-workers and colleagues and uh, it's very unfortunate that um, the discipline uh, or the area which uh, makes social uh, the marketing uh, the program successful becomes um, questionable and um, a point of uh, contention by so many uh, the people or by so many stakeholders uh, who are uh, part of the organization or who are part of the total effort. Um, therefore, marketing people on the social marketing side have to face uh, so many different challenges uh, that um, their job is um, uh, surely a lot more challenging than um, the job of marketing people on the other side of the fence, meaning either commercial marketing or even generic marketing on the NPO side. So this is all about uh, the differences in social marketing. And with this, we now move on to the next component. Thanks. We're now going to get into a new component, which is about uh, the importance of tools from other disciplines. But why I'm talking about tools from other disciplines is because marketing happens to be a many-sided social discipline that borrows concepts from so many different social sciences. Uh, of the social sciences that really have contributed towards the uh, discipline of marketing are economics, sociology, mass communication, and so on and so forth. The fact is that uh, this combination of uh, different concepts lets us uh, understand how customers could behave, why they behave the way they do, and what is it that we can do or should do in order to change their preferences and uh, their beliefs and value systems and so on. If we take a look at uh, social marketing, it becomes very clear that uh, the role of uh, sociology and mass communication becomes even more important because uh, we need to have a thorough understanding of uh, the consumer behavior. Let me give you here an example of uh, the commercial market where we try to influence the behavior of uh, the customer uh, by uh, letting him change his preference. Uh, we are selling um, biscuits, for example. We always can uh, do something with the product and then support it with uh, the help of uh, the communication campaigns to convince our customers that uh, our product is better and therefore they should change their preference. It is a challenging task. It is a very creative kind of um, a uh, task, but it is not something as difficult as uh, uh, social marketers to find their challenges when it uh, comes to uh, changing behaviors of their target audience. The behavior change on this side of marketing, meaning social marketing, is uh, much more substantial and consequential as um, compared with uh, just a change of preference on the other side of marketing. The reason is that um, on the social on the marketing side, you need to have a much deeper and thorough understanding of the value system that has evolved over a long, long period of time. Since it is a question of uh, the behavior change, your understanding has got to be much greater than you require in order to just change the plain preferences uh, in terms of selling a commercial product. And uh, here, there are uh, two uh, social disciplines that count a lot and uh, from which uh, the social marketing area uh, the borrows a lot and those are uh, social anthropology and mass communication. They play their uh, respective roles uh, by supporting uh, the, the field of uh, the social marketing in terms of carrying out market research and uh, implementing the programs uh, in light of the research findings and then um, uh, helping uh, the organization uh, with uh, putting together a communication program which is very relevant and which really has an appeal in the sense that uh, you can have your target audience uh, change their behavior. So how does it work? Let me explain that. Social anthropology is uh, a study of the human society, uh, its development, its functioning, its makeup, 
and um, all these social cultural with the values and customs uh, which the society uh, has uh, evolved uh, over its uh, evolutionary period and uh, all that is very useful in terms of uh, carrying out your uh, market research this may sound uh, very um, uh, highly sophisticated and complicated but in practice it uh, is not because uh, many uh, market research companies have uh, uh, the people working for them with the expertise in the area of sociology and uh, social anthropology. And they are the people who guide uh, the marketing effort in terms of indicating who are going to be the early adopters of uh, the desired behavior and who are going to be the ones resisting the, the proposition. And once, you know, who have uh, adopted the new values, whether they have a chance of uh, staying with those values for a long time to come or not. Uh, for example, uh, it has been seen that um, okay, the many smokers, after uh, quitting uh, smoking uh, okay, for a few years, again go back to smoking. So okay, what is it that uh, can be done or should be done in order to okay, maintain the behavior okay, which already has been um, changed? So these are uh, the kind of leads okay, which um, social anthropologists give the marketing people um, toward designing their okay, the market research okay, the programs. Once uh, this has been achieved, then the role of uh, the mass communication comes in. And the fact is, it is a, it's a very supportive uh, supplementary factor okay, because uh, based on the research findings and uh, the, the makeup of uh, the target audience, the organization is in a position to uh, put together um, a program which is a reflection of uh, the values and uh, uh, the customs uh, held high by the target audience. It is uh, mass communication that lays uh, the ground for uh, creating a climate of uh, the values and beliefs that uh, the target audience finds beneficial. So in other words, mass communication does the trick in terms of uh, uh, telling the customers or the target audience that the changed behavior is going to be socially desirable and acceptable and personally desirable and gratifying. So that's where the trick is. Um, the target audience has got to understand the reward action equation. And it is mass communication that um, actuates the target audience into taking the desired action. So in other words, it takes the target audience from the contemplation stage to the action stage. So these two disciplines, uh, social anthropology and uh, mass communication are the ones that set the ground for uh, behavior modification. Uh, the target audience uh, changes and modifies its behavior and hopefully uh, for a long time to come by understanding the reward action equation. And that is what these two disciplines do to social marketing. Let me give you an example of a successful program which was kicked off by the government in most likelihood back in 2012 on how to prevent the polio. It is not a question of putting a few drops in the mouth of a baby. It is a question of a complete and clear understanding on part of the population at large how important it is to prevent polio from happening. Look at the consequences of the disease uh, in the life of those who are inflicted by it. This kind of a campaign can be organized and executed by an NPO, no question about it. But my uh, point here is to get the point out something which is uh, a combination of uh, the, what social marketing borrows uh, the, from the two disciplines, i.e. social anthropology and uh, the mass communication. Another example uh, which is uh, the very well quoted in the literature is on um, prevention of uh, TB, meaning tuberculosis in Honduras. The patients were not finding it very motivating to continue their treatment and uh, they stopped the treatment despite the fact that uh, they knew it was good for them. The NPOs uh, carrying out uh, that uh, campaign, they got very concerned and uh, found out that uh, the real reason they were stopping the treatment was that uh, they were not given uh, emotional and uh, social support by their families because they were considered as outcasts. With that feeling, 
they thought uh, it uh, much more uh, preferable to stop the treatment than to continue with it. And therefore, based on the findings of the marketing research, uh, these NPOs working in that particular area came up with um, a campaign with which uh, was based on education of the families, uh, convincing them that uh, they have to give total support uh, to the uh, patients because it is good not only for them, but also for the families. And they succeeded in educating the target audience. The campaign was run and it was a huge success because the campaign was designed all around the fact that uh, you are not to desert your kith and kin when they are in difficulty. So this is uh, all about uh, the tools which are borrowed by social marketing from other disciplines, namely social anthropology and mass communication, um, two disciplines which are very prominent. And uh, with this, we now move on to the next and the last component, which is about sustainability and institutionalization. Social marketing is very challenging because it is all about bringing about a change in behaviors. But what is even more important is to maintain and sustain those behaviors. If people go back to their old habits and behaviors, it is a failure of social marketing because that reflects the program has not been successful. And therefore, there is a need to develop institutions which can continue the effort on a protracted basis. So in other words, there is um, a continual effort which is needed on part of uh, NPOs to make sure that uh, the people uh, stay with uh, the changed behaviors and those are the desired behaviors that uh, they should stay for all times to come. What is happening right now is that uh, initiatives um, in this particular sector are being taken by international agencies like the World Bank and the US Aid. They have um, their expertise, financial muscle, and in particular, the consulting help, mainly from the US. They are in a position to uh, initiate these programs, uh, get them implemented, start getting the desired results, but when it comes to maintaining the mainstream of those results, it becomes a responsibility of the local uh, people or the local government. The local governments in particular should play the intermediary role uh, whereas the NPOs could, they should take on the initiative uh, left by the international agencies. In the meaning, NPOs they should pick up the threads with where those agencies have left them. We already have people who have been working for those agencies, and therefore it is a challenge on part of the NPOs to could, make the best possible use of the expertise that already have been developed uh, could, for those people. Um, and um, it, it is a challenge on part of the NPOs to develop systems and procedures within their organizations which can imbibe whatever they have learned and uh, further build on um, the expertise and knowledge that is um, a, a combined pool. And um, this is how these programs are carried out by different countries where social marketing has been a great success. The list of uh, successful examples is um, quite long. And uh, all I can tell you is you rest assured that uh, with the such programs, with the, the, the kind of savvy and knowledge with which uh, I have uh, imparted with the help of uh, the literature um, is something that uh, we all should uh, develop and make use of. Thank you very much.